Hi, Jen Niles and uh, the Michael Jackson community. Thank you for for the questions. This is Steve Barron. I'm talking to you from London. Um, and I'm just going through the questions that you will send. Thank you very much for all sending in Q&A questions. And I hope to do the A part. Um, and uh, the first one's from Zach in England. Um, they're just in order of how they came in, really. But Zach in England, for, he says, First of all, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Secondly, I would like to ask, how was Michael's attitude on set? We all know he was craving his perfected vision to become a reality. But was he also lenient with the crew, i.e. did he have a sense of humour when surrounded by the cameras? Also, the significance of this short film transcends the meaning of the song. The artistry that you and Michael created together to pave a story of such a deep topic is wonderful, and I hope we see a high-resolution scan in the future to really feel the magic that I'm sure was present on set each day. Oh, um, thank you, Zach. Uh, yeah, the... Um, the high resolution scan. Well, I've still got a one inch of the master of uh, of Billie Jean um, in the closet somewhere, and one day it'd be great to get that put onto digital and uh, make sure it's as close to the first generation as possible. I mean, we'd never we wouldn't get back to the film, but uh, um, you know we'd definitely get a get a good strong master of it if if we do that one day. Um, but he was Michael was. Uh, um, exemplary on set. Um, he was, you know, curious and charming, and um, the best way to see it actually, there are some dailies from the shoot that we recently found, and you can see, you know, as the day goes on in in these dailies, that he got more and more comfortable with it, um, and uh, you know, you can actually get those uh, if you put in egg and chips and Billy Jean, which is the title of the book. Um, eggandchipsandbillyjean.com there's an actual website with about a minute of of the dailies and you get a sense of the atmosphere in the set uh, outside of the actual video, around the video um, but on the day he um, it was great, he asked me about my wife and our baby we were about to have and uh, I can remember him talking about that and me being quite surprised that he even knew about that and uh, I think I told him we, we were going to get married in, in Oxfordshire and and uh, he was, you know, he, he, was, he was just great. He was really tolerant with our budget restrictions too. We only had $50,000, which sounds like a lot of money then, but uh, to make the video. But compared with Beat It, um, which, you know, six weeks later was like $300,000 and Thriller was a few million dollars and, uh, you know, so we... We were the low budget uh, opener for um, the, uh, the the kind of videos off off the uh, thriller album. Um, it meant that the ambitions of uh, of how everything would light up around Michael had to be a bit homemade, but he was he was really understanding of that. The next question is from Etoile thirty seven. It says. Uh, can you tell us a funny memory from the time you spent with Michael? Um, yeah, I mean, um, it, obviously it was a long time ago now, but an amusing moment I can remember, kind of amusing, was actually in the post-production. He came into the edit suite uh, uh, when we were cutting the video back in London after having filmed it in L.A. And uh, I can remember, you know, we, we had, uh, by by then I'd kind of constructed most of the the video, how it would look, which pieces we were going to use and where they were going to be. And we'd done we'd done the centre section, the dancing piece, where there were the three split screens of Michael. And uh, we were just getting those completely right and uh, um, and then, you know, showed it to him. And he was, um, as he looked through it, Michael said, uh, well, he said, I, I prefer, prefer the one on the right. And uh, he was talking about them as if the split screens had been put up as as multiple choice for what we were going to choose as we went but it uh, he didn't he didn't realize that that was going to be the concept it wasn't in storyboards and things so it was like uh, something we were doing to uh, to jazz up that center section and so it was quite funny that it was just a you know just a miss a misinterpretation of what what this process and what was going on in this cutting room and and whether 
whether we were just looking at, at different options. Uh, and then he, you know, I quickly told him, he had to chuckle about it because I quickly told him, well, that's what we're going to do. That's how it's going to look. In those, you're going to get three of you on screen at the same time. So that, that was a funny moment. Uh, this one is from Jay Hoffman in Cardiff, UK, another UK. Um, Mr. Barron, if, if Michael was still with us, what song from his catalogue would you like to create a short film for? Um, well, actually, after Billy Jean, uh, Michael rang up a few years later, and uh, I can't remember how much later, but he'd, uh, he asked me to make a, a video from old footage for Who's Loving You, and uh, which was footage of him when he was really young, when he was just a little kid. And uh, the song is so charming and, and brilliant. I think, uh, you know, I'd like to do another from the same time, perhaps. I mean, um, if, if given a choice of any of them, I, I'd, I'd love to. Got to Be There is, um, is incredible. Um, just so evocative and beautiful and, and uh, innocent and so emotional a song. Uh, I, I suppose that one, out of uh, if I had a choice of any to do, I'd love to do a, a, some sort of video for that. Would be amazing. This is another one from Zach from England. Um, his question is: Did Michael speak with you about his desire to perform this song, Billy Jean, on stage, and that when he was innovating the dance on the sidewalk, um, he had future performances in mind? So. When he was innovating the dance on the sidewalk, he had future performances in mind. Um, I didn't talk to him about uh, any stage performance. Uh, we we got into a uh, discussion about choreography, and uh, um, you know he had a, a dance planned for for the song for Billie Jean, but not completely planned because he was still open to what was going to happen on the day. And luckily, because. Actually, what actually, what really happened was because of the limitations of the the lighting up of the paving stones and everything, he he was able to really bring in a, a kind of choreography that was a merge between what he might have thought about before, planned, practiced a little bit, and what uh, was going to be necessary to make it work with uh, what was going on around him. In fact, you know the way the stones were lighting up, being light, lit up manually. And uh, with no real rehearsal, he brought this sort of trepidation into the uh, dance, which uh, I thought was amazing. And, uh, you know, that was that was all really as he went along. I've got a feeling that the moonwalk and things, uh, which he obviously had in mind, and I think, you know, was something that was around in South L.A. at the time, um, didn't really come up in... Uh, you know, with with the Billie Jean shoot itself, but obviously came big time into the stage performance. Um, okay, Pat Minton from the USA uh, has got a question in a few parts. He says, first of all, how did you meet Michael? Um, well, I met him in his manager's office, uh, really after he had seen the Human League on MTV, uh, the Don't You Want Me baby don't you want me baby video that um i had made and uh he then uh through the management got in touch and that's where i, I met him in la um the pat minton also says how excited was michael about doing the billy jean short film um and he seemed very excited about the, the the idea and the magic of filmmaking and the potential of storytelling and and uh, you know, cinema generally, he's just seemed fascinated by, by that. And we use a lot of the old cinema techniques in the, in the video. Uh, be really, he'd asked for some magic, and uh, and I tried to bring in some of the magic of filmmaking as well. The 3M material that goes around uh, the lamppost is actually something that uh, was I'd worked on when I was a camera assistant uh, on Superman. On the first Superman with Marlon Brando, uh, he'd worn a, an outfit that got uh, that got lit up really through the camera, through a mirror, through the camera, not really by eye, but just uh, through a light on the same axis and things. And that kind of magic of filmmaking, he was really fascinated with, and, and us painting the 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 set 
as well um, in front of the camera. So we had three feet in front of the camera. We had the whole second story of the of the set of the street, um, which was another filmmaking technique that he was really excited about. Um, uh, and your other question, Pat Minton, was um, what was it like working with Michael Jackson? And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a hard one. I mean, there was a special kind of feeling, a special aura around him. Um, it was came as a, from a mix of things. He was ambitious and uh, obviously and, and curious, you know, with with little helpings of kind of driven, um, you know, uh, um, in that ambition and things. And, uh, you know, I mean, when he danced, that was like another world. It was like entering another world. He was like watching him and being that close to him when he did did dance and I'd never seen anything like it before was like being drawn, uh, you know, onto, into another universe almost, and uh, that was really thrilling. Okay, these are from Snow White Loves Peter Pan in Mexico. That's the name of the, the tag on it, um, and a few questions. One is, uh, did Michael contribute in any other way for the short film besides the dance sequences? Was it your idea to, to have Michael wearing the leather tuxedo? Um, yeah, it wasn't wasn't my idea. We worked with a costume designer, I th Francine uh, was her name, I think, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Francine. And uh, she helped gather ideas together that complemented the set design. You know, the pink and the black look, and uh, you know, was all kind of really nicely coordinated. And uh, and I, and perhaps also, I can't totally remember. But Michael probably brought in. One of his people too. She was more of the film side, uh, styling a stylist um, for the story and things. Um, and it says here, and the second question from Snow White loves Peter Pan is, how did he influence you in your later work? Um, well, influence. I think you take influences from everything in life, and you know, there I was had a special chance to see a master at work. I mean, I'd worked with a complete master mover and performer. Um, and I think the influence from being that close to a master can, can trickle onto and into everything you do. Um, you know, it's, uh, that's, I don't know how else to put it. This is from Mike Fan. Uh, hello, Mr. Barron. Do you remember Michael Jackson's reaction to the final version of the Billie Jean music video? Did you continue to listen to Michael's music after doing the video? Um, yeah, I remember he he really he liked the look of the video. He, in fact, he asked how did how did we get that look? And uh, he's you know he's referring to that the grainy cinema look with that contrast. And uh, I said we crushed the blacks, and. You know, I, I said that, and then there was a silence, and uh, and it was kind of one of those awkward silences. While I, th I thought maybe he took that the wrong way, and uh, you know, and then I didn't know how to get get around that. But that was the kind of it wasn't the technical term for it, but it was what we call it whenever we worked within the music video world. We call it crushing the blacks, and it could sound it could be taken completely the wrong way, obviously. And uh, it was awkward in, in that moment, but um, you know, yes, I watched it. I watched in awe alongside everybody else when when Thriller came out. You know, talking about you know listening to the music that followed and 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 watching the videos that followed. I, I was totally you know blown it's away from, by Thriller uh, along Darryl, with the rest of the world. Uh, seven four eight Daryl seven four eight Daz from Bruges in Belgium. He says, Dear Mr. Barron, what was the inspiration behind the name of your book, Egg and Chips and Billie Jean? Um, the title comes from the point I was trying to sort of get across, which is that I felt a lot of my 80s journey was really sort of contradictions. Uh, it went from the sublime to the ridiculous, and uh, I left school at 15. Um, I sort of hated it, to be honest, and I, I hated the discipline and questioned everything and was just a bit lost and angry and stuff and uh, and just and fell into really um, 
the world of music videos that was just beginning. It was so much was timing and uh, incredible luck and everything. And uh, I just thought that, you know, and I used to go down the road and get egg and chips for 12p in one calf and it was like 13p in the other calf. And you'd actually, those are the days you had to think about that one, one p, one pence, one cent, where, you know, whether you could afford it. And uh, so egg and chips was my favourite meal because it was the cheapest thing on the menu. And it was delicious. And um, and it just went from that within a few years to there I was on a set of Billie Jean and directing Michael Jackson. And that was kind of such a contradiction. that I, I wanted to sum that up in the title. Question but. two from Daryl748, Daz from Bruges in Belgium. Um, he says, can you tell us a bit about the schedule, the hours and how an, a usual shooting day was when you did Billie Jean. Uh, schedule, I mean, this is a long time ago, so I've got to recall that. I mean, it was, I, th I think it was an 8 a.m. call, uh, two days shooting. There was plenty of prep days and uh, getting, you know, getting the set together, painting the set, getting it all prepared and everything. Um, but the, the shooting day was probably 8 a.m. And I think, uh, I don't think, Michael was called till probably about 10 o'clock um, and he'd then take a bit of time and by the time we got to shoot with him it was probably midday um, when we did the first shot. Um, I, you know, in that time I'd walk him around the set and say, look, this is being built here, that's being built there. I'd show him how the second story of the street was going to be a particular method, a cinema method of, uh, of increasing, extending the set without having to build the whole thing up high and everything. It was all done in glass in front of the camera, which I think I've talked about before. But um, And then we would work late. Usually music videos, you'd work late. I think that was a, it was a two-day shoot, so we probably did till, you know, 8 or 9 the first day, p.m., and maybe even later the second day by the time we got everything. Was, this was quite a long track. I think it was nearly five minutes, the actual video for Billie Jean. And... Uh, that, you know, when you have a lot of them, that would be three, three and a half minutes. It's a lot of screen time together in a in a short space of time, so you have to move fast as a as a unit, faster than you would on a movie. Yeah, Daz has question show. number three from Bruges in Belgium. Um, you worked with other artists. Did you do anything different working with Michael Jackson? Um, yeah, I mean, the thing that was different working with Michael Jackson is this was somebody extraordinary um and obviously you know i've worked with david bowie and and madonna and uh you know quite quite a lot of big names over the years um so there was but there was something extra special i'm sure you've heard this many times but there was a <clears throat> there was a certain aura about michael that uh that kind of was very seductive and um he uh, he was quite obviously quite young here just before Thriller came out, and um, there was a real sort of charm um, around him, and uh, absolute stunning brilliance came out when he you know performed and things. So that was all very different working with with anybody else. I never found anybody that extraordinary. Uh, although there, there was a lot of uh, amazing from Ankita S in India, where I've just been actually. Um, it's hello, Mr. Baron. Thank you for all your lovely work. What an honour to have worked with the King. Could you please tell us what, according to you, was that one quality that distinguished Michael from other artists, celebrities in the show business? Do you remember any fun moments you shared? And do you think Michael would be happy with the songs and videos? And the way they are being created, that are being released now after June two thousand and nine. Thanks and regards. That's from Enkita in India. Well, yeah, I just came back from India. I've just been producing a a movie over there, a comedy, and um, uh, it's an incredible country. Um, it's it's a kind of a cliche to say that because it's a country, but it's like it's like a continent of uh, you know, it's like saying Europe's an incredible country because there's so many different parts of India. Um, but I had a great time, finished up in Calcutta. Um, anyway, the, the questions, I kind of answered the question about what distinguished Michael from other artists in, in, his, in the atmosphere of working with him. Um, 
uh, and would would Michael be happy with the songs and videos and the way they are being created that are being released now after June 2009? Uh, that's a tough one. I mean, I don't know whether I can. I mean, I don't know. Would he be happy? I don't. I think he he was a perfectionist, and uh, I think he would want everything uh, done his his way. And he had, you know, exceptional taste and style and uh, ideas. So. I don't think so. No, I think he'd want to change everything to to be the way. This is he from Mist in Sweden. Uh, it says, "I wonder about the cloth with tiger stripes that later became a tiger cub. Whose idea was it, and what does it really mean?" Also, I am interested to know more about the homeless man who became rich, or did he just get better clothes? Anyone can have their own ideas about it. But what was the purpose about it when you made the video? Whose idea was it? Um, yeah, well. The transformation, the idea of transformation was really kind of extension of the idea of the Midas touch, really everything changing and turning and, and glowing. And, um, and I was very, I was pretty obsessed by the idea of transformation at the time. I, I, I don't know why, I just see parallels in things and how things could become things and transform. And uh, so I think the ideas really just came out of that. Um, the Midas touch, you know, turning from uh, from a bum in the street to, to somebody as rich as a king, you know, is a is an old idea. It's an old Grimm's fairy tale. It's uh, you know, it's those are those are things that are always around in the ethos. It was just another another part of the video. To to do that too, and the uh, the cloth and the little leopard. I've got racking my brains, but I think on the single there was a, a little leopard, wasn't there? Or am I imagining that? Um, and that might have inspired that moment. Um, but uh, yeah, it was really transformation from and Barbie O seven one five in Texas, and she says, "Hi, Mr. Baron. First, I'd like to thank you for participating in this Q and A. We all really appreciate this. And second. That's my pleasure. And second, I'd personally like to thank you for directing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You made me a hero to my little nephews at the time as I took them to see it repeatedly. Thank you for that. Um, it, she goes on to say, I'm very curious about the Billie Jean film. I've seen outtakes from the shoot and Michael seems very relaxed and he's smiling. I know this is before the outrageous fame made him more shy and reclusive, but he looks so comfortable here I know you and your crew had probably not met before. Were there any members of his team there, or did you just all hit it off immediately? What was the shoot like? Um, yeah, the outtakes uh, that you've seen, uh, we, we put up, I think, about 45 seconds of of the dailies. I found the rushes on a tape uh, from the shoot, and uh, they, were, they were just kind of a really good insight into what the atmosphere was really, which was pretty relaxed because you see, you know, when the camera rolls, you see Michael before he jumps into his dance and uh, you see when the, before the camera cuts how the crew are, are just pottering around, getting on with it sort of thing. And the atmosphere was great. Um, he, you know, he, I think we made it very comfortable for him. There was a, it was a and m Studios in a, uh, that was down in, uh, it's called a Chaplin s studio actually on La Brea um, in Los Angeles. And uh, they, you know, the stage was comfortable. There was a really good creative crew, production design. Um, the lighting team, Daniel Pearl, um, were also so much, uh, you know, so really good professionals. Um, and, you know, everybody was excited to see. Michael, but it wasn't, you know, it was just we were all working together. It was a feeling of we were working together uh, to do this, not, you know, not different camps or anything. And uh, so, yeah, it was a good, it, it was a good vibe. As you can see in those rushes, it's, uh, it, he was, he was very, he was definitely shy and reclusive. And, uh, but as the day wore on, you know, he, he just kind of got comfortable in it and enjoyed uh you know, playing around. Yes, with, uh, with and also Barbie O seven one five of Texas says, "I also read before you came up with the Midas Touch idea for the video. Did you already have this vision in mind, 
for another video and then used it for Billie Jean. His his team said he wanted a Peter Pan quality video. Did you take that to mean magical? Did Michael have any input into your vision besides the dancing? Um, well, yes. Uh, we The Midas Touch idea was initially, I think it was for Joan Alma Trading, uh, was an I idea for, for a video for her. And uh, we didn't do the video uh, for some reason or another and so the idea was in the back of my mind and when I heard from heard this track and and uh, heard uh, from the, the the management that they wanted um, that he he enjoyed that Peter Pan quality to things uh, which is I'm a massive Peter Pan fan and you know also loved love a little bit of fantasy and magic and that sort of thing so I, I did take it to mean magical I think of Peter Pan I think of you know Tinkerbell, and I think of um, you know the, this, uh, this this special, almost childish magic that uh, that I, I wanted to 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 bring to it. So I suppose the colours and the the vibe gave it that, but I also wanted to go into the you know make sure it hit the atmosphere of the track because I, in a way I didn't feel the atmosphere of Billie Jean was conducive to like a, a kid's vibe. It wouldn't be the sort of thing you'd use as a score in a kid's magical film. So I wanted the the magic to trans to go to be slightly older, hence the you know, the the lover and the the uh the private detective and um and that kind of vibe. But still, you know, not not a dangerous environment and, and you know, not just off reality and everything. And uh um and uh yeah that, that's about it